Okay, you guys ready? Yes. Oh, the yellow roads of Texas. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Satellite of Love. I'm Mike. This is Tom Servo, and this is Crow T. Robot. And we're just working on one of those beloved old standards. You know, these are the kind of songs that everyone hey, can hey, enjoy. Hey, there's something coming into the hex field. Oh. Hello, yes? Yeah, hello, Arnie. Uh, Arnie? Arnie. Yeah. Arnie, you sound weird. Look, you gotta get over here and sign these papers. I know you're not thrilled to hear from me. Uh, ma'am, I, I think you may have the wrong number. There's no Arnie here. Wow. That was weird. Well, yeah. let's go. Okay. Oh, oh the, the yellow, yellow rose, rose of Texas. Texas. And the, 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 the mic. Oh, uh, the hex field. Look, I know Arnie's there. You don't gotta cover for him, Chopper. Chopper, this is you, right? Look, you don't have to cover for him. He just has to get over here and sign these papers. A lady. Hold uh, on. What? What's for supper? Eggs. Again? Yes, again. So is Arnie staying there with you, Chopper? Uh, this may take a while. We'll be right back. Look, Chop, do not let him take advantage of you. He's a sweet guy, but he takes, takes, takes. Mommy's on the phone! Of course, I was only about 16 when me and Arnie got hooked up. Man, he was so good looking. Pack of them. Nowadays, it's just his whiskey breath, this dump and 4 a.m. calls from the police. Oh, hold on, my bacon's on fire. Wow. Well, you know, she did have a certain je ne sais quoi about her, didn't she? No. Let's see what Benny and June are doing. Hello, Murray, automata. Say, what's one of the most popular forms of exercise this month? Hmm? Hmm? Well, that's right, the recumbent bike. As I see it, recumbent creators were afraid to make them too comfortable. <laughs> well, I'm not afraid. Ta-da, the recumfy bike. <laughs> Dr. Ruff, could you tuck me in before my ride? Of course, Franklin. There you go. Uh, check out the reading lamp, nightstand, and goose down comforter. Of course, we may have to ditch the wheels and the pedals to make room for the ice machine and espresso bar, but. Uh, I Doctor, we... uh, I can't get it to go. Well, try harder, you load. But there's kind of a lot of stuff here. There's kind of a lot of stuff here. <laughs> Nappy time, don't you think, Frank? Back up to you, Margo. Well, that is really, really useless. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, our invention pumps new life into that age-old deck of playing cards. Mm -hmm. Let's face it, with 52 cards, there's only so much you can do. A jack, queen, king, give me a break! <laughs> ah, that's why we each came up with our own new card to sort of spice things up a bit. <laughs> Mine is the aid of Chris Lemon, son of the very talented Jack Lemon. Chris Lemon? Yeah, I just loved him in duet. Yeah. Huh. Well, my card is Todd. Just Todd. Todd is helpful, and Todd is there for you. Todd? Todd? Yeah. 
Well, is he, what value is he? Is he royalty or what? <laughs> Todd doesn't like to be pigeonholed. He says the term royalty puts limitations on your dreams. Well, okay, what happens if I lay down an A to Chris Lemons? Who wins? Oh, no. Todd says numerical values are meaningless, and he doesn't like competition. Now, actually, now that you bring it up, Todd says your Chris Lemon card has issues he needs to work through. Well, if but it's okay with, little... with Todd, why doesn't Crow go next? What oh, do you got, yes, buddy? Yes, My card is the... <laughs> Crow of diamonds! Woo! Crow of diamonds. Crow, I, I think you missed the whole point of this exercise. Huh? Well, Todd thinks it's okay. Huh? Todd. <laughs> Enough of your touchy-feely crap, Nelson. Today's movie really gets going about two minutes before the closing credits. It's another Bert I. Gordon pain parade called The Beginning of the End. And I hope you have health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Hold your life. <laughs> and then later on, Todd's gonna show me this really great massage technique and photos from his weekend with Robert Fulgham. And that was ah, oh, movie sign. Oh, we got Dark movie sign. Come on, movie yeah. sign. You know, I've got a good place for yeah. Todd. Yeah, well, that's fine. It's okay. Oh, boy, you're deal with that. Looks like this is where Ichabod Crane takes his dates. <laughs> Ooh, and you know, it'd be sexy until you think it might be my parents. Oh, my God! Ooh. Ask me why. Hey, how does he sing while he's kissing her? Oh. Never be afraid. You taste like vinyl. Betcha anything, there's going to be a claw hanging from their door handle. <laughs> yep. No, not there. Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, don't give me a hickey. What? 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 Huh. Hmm? Oh, what? The beginning of the end already? I don't. It just started. Oh. Oh. Neat. And the June Taylor dancers. <laughs> Oh, is this oh. a flashback to previous credits? <laughs> yeah. You know what that uh, lady saw when she screamed there? Lou Ferrigno? Maybe. Uh, oh, stop it. I'm getting nauseated. Whoa. Maybe she saw Bigfoot. Bigfoot oh. pizza? No, I, I, well, no, maybe. I don't. No, I don't. Oh, could I get some Dramamine for this credit sequence? <laughs> you okay, buddy? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Please welcome your new Richmond yeah. High School marching band. <laughs> Honey. Mike, I think I need a bucket. <laughs> Credit's sick there. Hang in there. Hang in. Oh. Oh. Uh, I'm okay. But put your head between your knees. Uh, okay. Oh. Don't Does that slip feel in. better? Yeah. 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 Uh. Wow. Uh. Whoa. So this is like a beginning of the end bold condensed font here, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, honey, do you think you could keep down oh. some 7-Up and soda crackers? Uh, no. Some lukewarm pork? Uh, I'm oh, sorry. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, uh, One more time. There's too many notes. So is something going to happen? No, no. Folks, we'll start the movie as soon as our ride gets here. Man, that car radio is loud, huh? You know, Bird Eye sure doesn't skimp on the opening. This is 254 on the Ludlow swing. And we're hopelessly lost. 984-2. We'll be checking in in 45 minutes. 10-4, car 254. KLP 646. You want to say hi to headquarters? Pull over. I saw something. If they had to pull over every time you see something, it's going to be a long ride. Grand Tool is only five miles away. Yesterday was ten miles away. Someone's moving a sign. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Something happened off screen here. Uh, uh, Miss Mansfield? I'll report in. You know, these things just don't do anything to me emotionally anymore. I'm drained. Hi, me again. Start 254 to Champaign-Urbana. Hmm. Urbana to 254, go ahead. Car 254 to Urbana. We're investigating an accident at Junction 45 in Ludlow Cutoff. Foul play suspected. Well, no Send homicide detail. Ah, uh, hold on. I'm going to read your poem. 
Oh, yeah. The driver may have been William Summerfield, 177 Decatur Street, Ludlow, Illinois. Calling fighter plane. One of you stay on the scene. The other investigate the Ludlow address. 10-4. Car 254, KLP 646. Man, he's There's good. Man. Yep. Well, this is it, I guess. I don't know what to say, Carl. I'll never forget you. No, just go. Please. Looks like a girl's sweater. The car was attacked by a sweater. Oh. So why is Walter Winchell in this scene? Hey, it's my size. Come in, car 88. Oh, excuse me. That's for me. I'm the man. Call me angel of the morning, angel. Yellow. Car 88 to Urbana. McKenzie here. Go ahead. Car 254 has failed to report. Is that car in your area? I beg your no, pardon. Not here. 10 4, car 88. This is KLP 646, Urbana, calling car 254. Come in, Wait a minute. Car McKenzie! McKenzie! You're breaking every rule in the book! Urbana to car 254. Come in, car 254. Oh, Houston, we got a problem. Urbana to car 254. Come in, car 254. Uh, 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 I was the first one here. Hello, I'm at Ludlow. It's really dark. The whole town's destroyed. It's really neat. Everybody's gone. I'm lonely. <laughs> you gotta do something. You won't believe this. Send help. Lots of help. Quick. Uh, uh, oh, forget it. Executive producer Stephen Botchko. Yeah, basically, I run the army. How you guys doing over there? I don't feel very fun today. Come on, just come on. The director's brother-in-law, ladies and gentlemen. What? Hey! <laughs> you know, Bird Eye did all this in one take. Amazing. Da, 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 dun, 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 you know, when I was a boy, we didn't have fast movies. Sometimes we had to wait three or four hours for something to happen. I love that story. Anyone needing to go to the bathroom? Go now! How will you make it on your own? <laughs> He's got a radio tuned to the marching band station. <laughs> all Sousa, all the time. Hmm. Must get Viver in. <laughs> now this is an improv that really went nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, men. Private Reese is feeling vulnerable today. It's up to us to cheer him up. Your Hover Buick will get you there in style. Hover Buick. <gasps> Serviceman, great! All right, lady, just follow the arrows. Any chance of getting through? Nope. What happened? Look, lady, just detour, will you please? Don't make me pull you from your car and beat you with my nightstick. Hmm. Hmm. Quiet. Smooth ride. Turbo hydromatic. Well, now they're going to have to turn the rear projection screen around, too. Guys, this is so not Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I wonder what they're doing here. Well, gee, martial law is fun. Whoa, that is a Texas-style camera. Tell him to take that detail out of there. The old man is sending a replacement. That's my line. Finally remembered. I'm sorry, soldier. I should have explained. I'm Audrey Ames, National Wire Service. Yes, ma'am. How do I get there? Sorry, my orders are to let no one through. Well, that surely doesn't include the press. I'm sorry, ma'am. No one is what the old Good man Good job said. today, Lance. Carry on. Well, was it very bad? So ashamed. Can he get hurt? Look, lady, you're not going to fish any information out of me. Now, why don't you get back on the main road? It's about a mile south. Hear that, guys? I really told her off mile south. <laughs> he likes me. I think we're dating. Oh, I locked my keys in the car with the... Oh. <laughs> hey, the car started without her even doing anything. Jimmy Jam does his thing. Until further notice, I'm Paul all Freeze. traffic will continue to be routed around the Ludlow area according to special orders. I'm turning myself in. I'd like to see your commanding officer. Here's a little something for you. 
Well, I'm sorry, but the colonel's busy. Too busy for these. I am deaf. Please give me money. Hmm. Sentry. Ma'am. File on Dalton Trumbull, Trumbull, sir. For, sir. Thanks, Lieutenant. Sit down, please. Now get up again. <laughs> Are you the Audrey Ames who covered Korea for that picture magazine? That's right. Well, I hated it. I read the book you wrote after the war. Liked it very much. Well, thank you. You're with National Wire Service now. I was on my way to Chanute Field to do a picture story on a new jet plane they're unveiling, and I ran into a roadblock. So? Yeah, you're right. What was I thinking Captain, about? There was a town beyond that roadblock. A town that isn't there anymore. Until we find out exactly what happened, we'd like to avoid publicity. <laughs> you have any idea what happened? I'm sorry, Mr. Maybe after this whole cover-up, we can have Captain, coffee sometime? you can't suppress a story like this. We're not trying to, Miss Ames, but until we have more facts... This is the Army, Audrey Ames. Would you give us your word you won't release a story until we give the go-ahead? You have my word. God, your hair smells wonderful. Sometime during the night, the town of Ludlow was completely demolished. And? The town's population, about 150 people, vanished. Vanished? No bodies, nothing. It was some David Copperfield Well, there must be stunt. some trace. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe, Miss Ames. But I'm Coco a Taylor. Detail combed through the wreckage for two solid hours and couldn't find a thing. Two Was solid hours? We don't know. On account of the fact we're not very smart. 150 people just don't vanish into thin air. We're still trying to find out what happened. If you'd like to sit in. Yes, thank you, I would. I've got a clarinet in my car. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Dave, what time did you leave Ludlow last night? Must have been after 11 o'clock. Arnold Zilfeld's father. I television news at 10.30, so I sat there and watched that. Well, then I caught Letterman. And my daughter wanted me to sit there and talk a while. Then I got to thinking that I had to get up early. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Your point, so please? I took off. Did you notice anything strange right Hi, about the house or about the way the family acted? Other than wanting my son-in-law to no, diaper me, nope. Always. When you're driving out of town, nice nothing likeness. out of the way in the street, the building, or the sky. No unusual light, some sound or movement. Objection, you're on. Oh. Well, I heard some sound like thunder. Couldn't see it so good because of the rain. The plane went over. You are so high. All right, Dave. I can call on you again if I need you. Oh, yes, you sure. know you can call me, Tad. Edna? My next guest, Rosemary. <sighs> Is that the telephone company's official transcripts? It was a mistake. I, I didn't mean to... Oh. Ludlow at 11.59 p.m. Mm -hmm. When did you first notice anything wrong with the Ludlow connection? Andrew Four Jackson. <laughs> Old Hickory. <laughs> I phoned the company linesman to go out there right away. So the telephone lines could have gone down anywhere between 11.59 and 4.45. Yes, yes, is that what All you right, want? Edna, thanks. You've been very helpful. Man, she's a tough old bird. <laughs> okay, bye. Oh, uh, Colonel Sturgeon. Miss Ames, National Wire Service. How do you do? Uh, Audrey Ames, I've read a lot of your stuff, seen a lot of your photographs. Reading your cleavage now. Oh. <laughs> Yellow. Yes. Set to go, sir, whenever you're ready. I'll be right there. Yeah, i got to pick up Phil at play practice. I hope you understand our problem, our need to keep this quiet. Yes, Captain briefed me. Then he pants if me. If anyone wants me, I can be reached in Ludlow by radio. Yes, sir. How's chances of me going along? Not this trip. Maybe later. Maybe later? In any case, not until we know what's out there. Oh, by the way, Colonel, my camera was taken from me at the roadblock by one of your men. I'll give orders to have it released. Okay. I'll take a long way out of here. I'm bird eye Gordon film, after all. See ya. What a loser. Oh, there has to be a logical explanation for this. A town of 150 people just doesn't disappear. This one did. Yes, but in general, they don't disappear. That's my point. Hey, now she's on the Evan and Costello show set. <laughs> Oh, man, I should have taken home ec or gone into teaching or nursing like all the other girls. Gosh, I'm 21 and I'm still not married. Yellow. Chicago Mobile Service Operator. I'd like to place a person-to-person -person call, please, to Mr. Norman Taggart. Me being one Editor of the persons, of, of course. National Wire Service. The number is Murray Hill 44836. Man, I miss those city? kind of phone numbers. Mm -hmm. New York. Yeah. All right. You wind up that jet plane story already? I'm not on the jet story. Norm, listen, I'm on to something I think can be real big. Me? Mm -hmm. Oh, he's right-handed. Where? Mm -hmm. Oh. Scribble, scribble. Brother. Scribble, scribble, as though I'm writing. Huh? What do you mean we can't print it? 
I've given my word to hold off for a while. Now listen, Norm. You're a fired. Plane flew over Ludlow last night about midnight. Just about the time the lid blew off. Check on it. And uh, check Washington. See if they had an atomic installation in the Ludlow area. Okay. Who am I, your stringer? Call me back as soon as you have anything, right? Goodbye. Jeez, her guy Friday. <laughs> cool. Hey, we found the 150 people. You were right. Sorry, miss. You can't. Oh, it's you again. I know I can't. But I'd like to have my camera back, please. Colonel Sturgeon said he was going to speak to somebody. Hey, Corporal. Matthias. She wants her camera back. <laughs> I'll get it. It's probably for me. Hello. Hi, do you know our jet bound up today? What's the score? Wrong track, baby. The mm. airlines confirm a commercial nice, nice. liner over Ludlow <laughs> at 12.03 last night. And there are no atomic installations, secret or otherwise, within 75 miles of Ludlow. Well, it was a possibility. The only people who've been playing around with uh, radioactive materials in your vicinity is the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Anything there? Department of Agriculture? Yeah. Yeah, they've got an experimental project just outside Paxton. U.S. Department of Agriculture, Illinois Experimental Station. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got that. I'll, I'll keep in touch. I gotta go. I've got someone in my office. Mm -hmm. I have a city idea. Mm -hmm. Chicago. I think it might work. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get out of here. Yeah. Wow, I don't know about this movie, you guys. I mean, yeah. nothing's happening. Yeah. I think maybe we should call the Mads. We can do that, right? Uh, well, I guess. Or I wouldn't advise it. Yeah, uh, I mean, why get them involved? Yeah. Huh? Well, I mean, I just think we should call the Mads. Why, why don't we call I the Mads? I don't know. My baby takes the morning train. She works till nine. Frank, I could not stop picking at that pan of lemon bars. I ate half the pan. <laughs> You're so lucky, I, you could eat anything and not worry. <laughs> oh, Pashaw, I'd give anything to have that complexion of yours. Oh, Frank. Hey, wow, Vicky is on. Oh. 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 You know, Frank, this is exactly what I wanted to do today. Just have the whole day to ourselves. <laughs> I'm declaring this National Hour Day. <laughs> Please, do not let me eat all of this. Well, I shouldn't. <laughs> oh, my God, Frank, switch on the game, switch on the game! So, uh, I guess we can call the Mads, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I don't think I'm going to do that for a while. No, I don't. We'll be right back. Hmm. Wow. Strange fellers. Come on in, just working on plutonium. Herman Bedilio. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for the Fornstein wedding. Tomatoes like Brahms. <laughs> Wow, suddenly salad. Excuse me. Yeah, and those are cherry tomatoes. Oh. I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. Hey, this is the produce department, isn't it? I beg it? your pardon. We're working overtime to keep Dom DeLuise fed. The more he ignores me, the more I'm attracted to him. Oh. Hello. I'm Peter Gray. Oh, hello. I... I spoke to him, but I guess he didn't hear me. Oh, he's a deaf mute. You would sensitive little. Working with radiation can be dangerous. I smelled that. Accident last year cost him his speech and his hearing. And 600 bucks. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking for the project director. I'm the project director. My name's Ed Wainwright. I'm mute, too. What can too. I do for you? Hmm? Oh, excuse me a minute. It's kind of a vague sign language, I'm isn't sorry, it? I'm sorry, Frank. Oh, he dropped his chocolate sampler. Nothing to worry about, just a slight catastrophe. <laughs> Do you have these catastrophes very often? Well, as often as we have government cover-ups. It's hard to keep these little things from getting in. These are snails. Last summer it was caterpillars. 
And after that, it was grasshoppers by the drove. This guy eats anything. Yeah, just last week, it was beetles. Now it's bagel dogs. Uh, what can I do for you? Uh, Mr. Wainwright, I'm Audrey Ames. I'm with National Wire Service. Mm -hmm. I suppose you've heard about what happened in Ludlow. Yes. I'd like to kiss you I'm full in the mouth. I'm trying to find out what was responsible, and it occurred to me that radiation of some sort might have caused the destruction out okay. there. No, I don't think so. Here. Let me show you a giant crouton we're working on. <laughs> We're the only people around here using radioactive materials. Maybe I shouldn't be keeping my lunch in here. I don't know. And isotopes aren't explosive. And they're packed with vitamins. Oh, I'm afraid your answer isn't here. Oh, I see. The big rush off. Mm. Now tell me, is this thing really a strawberry? Yes. And these are tomatoes. And those are turkey francs. This, we hope, is the future of the American farmer. And for that matter, all farmers everywhere. Can you eat them? No, not yet. I don't even like but tomatoes. We hope to develop one day a hybrid that can be eaten. How is it there hasn't been any publicity on this? Oh, there have been a few stories in the farm journals, but to most of the public, these giants are just freaks of nature. No practical value. Ah, get this How thing off me. How did they get me? so big? Well, radiation causes photosynthesis, that is, the, the growing process to continue night and day. The radioisotopes act as a sort of artificial <laughs> sun. The sun that never sets. Fascinating. Now, tell me, what's he doing? Well, that's plant food, essential minerals. And he's eating it. Keeps the plants from burning themselves out. They have to be fed constantly. Actually, the fruit would grow much larger if we didn't limit the stimulation. Speaking of stimulation... Maybe you'd like to do a story on us. I'd be glad to tell you more about the work. Ooh, schmooze Thank you very overdrive. much. I'd be very interested, but... Well, right now, I'm working on this Ludlow story. If you could see my hands Thanks right again. now, you'd be horrified. Right. Goodbye. Bye. Don't start. That's my mother, dear. She helps me through everything I do. And... Three jerks and a jill. Colonel! You here? Me well, here. he wouldn't let me inside, so... Oh, Colonel, Springfield is on the line. Colonel, you just got back from Ludlow. You said after you got back, I could go. I said maybe. Well, how about it? Tomorrow will be open to the press. Oh, Colonel, be fair. I played ball with you. Give me the jump on the other reporters who'll be in here. At least let me take some pictures in Ludlow. I promise I won't put them on the wire till tomorrow. Well, I guess you rate that. For effort, anyway. Barton, take my seams to Ludlow. Yes, sir. And I hope you have a strong stomach. Gabe Kaplan's performing. Oh, oh. he's nice. We're going to take some pictures in Ludlow. If uh, we're not back in 15 minutes, better come in after us. Check out that yes, guy sir. over there. He's taking a let few in the head. <laughs> No, that wouldn't stop a kid on a big wheel. Toughest job you'll ever love. Ah. All right, Captain, way, way to go! go. Hey. Huh? <laughs> Suddenly it's turned into Topper. Somebody turned down the Albert Glasser music? I can't concentrate. I wish the Larsons would take better care of their yard. Oh, it's a disgrace. Oh, look at that. My goodness. You want to stop and loot? It's a star city. Oh, look, there's a perfectly good two by four. This was no boating accident. I've had enough. I can't stand reality. Whoa, Colonel! Calendars to tell age. I could use ruins to count mine. Oh, am I here too? I was 25 when I went through Seoul after the show. I'm wearing panties right now. I was 20 when I took my camera into Cologne and Berlin after World War II. 24 when I saw Dylan at the bitter I'm end. I'm used to it by now. Captain, there's some things you never get used to. I like underarm owner. Thanks, how about my kiss? How about a drink to wipe away some memories? Good way to get rid of the jitters. I know a little place. How do 150 people vanish into thin air? Yeah, terrible. Martinez? Around this part of the country, things seem to have a way of vanishing. Only a couple of months ago, it was a warehouse. Kind of fell apart overnight, just like Ludlow. Goodbye, Captain. Oh, hello? Okay, okay, you can have your raise. <laughs> hey, he saw him hear something. Hmm? Women on the verge of an atomic breakdown. She wants me so bad. Let's get on with the harassment so we can get some work done. Hi, did you decide to come back and do a story on us? Well, no, as a matter of fact, I came back for some help. I'd like you to do me a favor. 
Oh, yes. Anything I can. Does it involve taking Remember my pants off? Remember the warehouse was destroyed about three oh, months ago? I think. Uh -huh. I want you to take me to see it. Lend a dinner and a movie. Hmm. Oh, well, I, uh, I'd like to, but I've got too much work in my hands right now. How about tomorrow? Three months ago, a warehouse was destroyed. Hmm? And the one person in it vanished. This morning, Ludlow was destroyed. All the people in it vanished. Coincidence? Don't Read you the see book. a possible tie-up? Look, lay off, lay off! Possible, I suppose. What do you want me to do? Just ride out there with me and take a look at it. I don't understand what good that'll do. The authorities investigated it thoroughly. Look, I'm coming on to you. Don't you get it? in terms of crime and publicity. You're a scientist. You think in terms of cause and effect. Maybe you'll see something that the sheriff missed. <laughs> well, that shouldn't be too difficult. Still, I, I don't know. Frank, that's filthy. I should wash your hands out with soap. <laughs> What's he saying? <laughs> he says that, uh, that your lips are easy to read, that your theory makes you a very bright girl in his book, and that he'd like to go along with us. And he's being held here against <laughs> his will. Ex Oops. Peter, no! No, no stop! Stop! He's gonna want to see. When you barge into people's lives and drag them off to places they don't really want to go, aren't you sort of in danger of becoming unpopular? Slugbug! That's an occupation Ow. hazard. Oh, I thought you... How'd you pick such an occupation? Wait, this isn't a I stick ship. Ah! I guess I was just born inquisitive. Ever since I can remember, I wanted to know the why and wherefore of just about everything I saw. I inherited my knack with the camera from Dad. Your dad, as a matter of fact. My curiosity supplied the nose for news, and the camera supplied the memory. <laughs> so there you have it. <laughs> what, a... what about you? Have you always been interested in science? Well, after my German oh, dance all day... Oh, I guess I days, always have been in one way or another. I used to fool around with radios and anything electrical when I was a kid. I was a radar officer during the war, and then I went into this when I got out. Oh. Look, let's just play the radio for a while, hmm? <laughs> ah, yes, I remember now that every time I read one of your articles, it was dateline from some area of flood or famine or war. <laughs> Made me realize what a sheltered life we scientists really lead. What do you think of that? Sheltered? Uh, Look what happened to Frank. Yeah, watch this. Hey, Frank! <laughs> Jeez, Frank, you should have thought of that before we left. Doesn't look that great, but they got great onion rings here. Ooh. Huh? What? Huh? What the? What the? Hey, this is even worse than that other stuff that we didn't know what it was. Well, it's a fixer-upper, that's for sure. Looks to me as though some force had to push these walls out from the inside. Dur hey. Think it was an explosion? Well, it couldn't have been. Any explosion big enough to destroy this warehouse would certainly have been heard in Ludlow. Well, at least we saved this hat. That's what they kept stored here. Wheat. Almost a million bushels. A lot of wheat. And it was surplus to keep the market from being oversupplied. I hate Does it strike wheat. you as a little strange that out of all that wheat, there's not a grain left anywhere? No, that's nature's way, Audrey. Birds probably cleaned up the leavings. Geez, I'm deaf. They're talking about weed over here. <laughs> that's Frank's way of yelling. <laughs> what? What? Wow, that's a whole lot of skirt. I see what you mean, Frank. What is it? Ed? What? What did he say? You see how barren this ground is. I don't know. I've seen horses leave it like this. Well, this is deeper than horses go and much more thorough. And much more fun. Practically down to the roots. The horses pick and choose. They leave patches. I was in fury, so I know that. Barren. Please don't say that word. I'm very sensitive right now. Well, leave it to old Frank. He'll make a botanist out of me yet. You're head of a government lab and you need lessons in botany? Well, just lay off. I try to teach him what I can about my field of study. He tries to teach me what he can about his. Aren't you a botanist? No, no, I'm an entomologist. <laughs> the study of insects. Oh, fascinating. How come you're working with plants? Oh, you're right. Well, the, uh, the existence and development of plants and insects are very closely related. Hmm. They're highly dependent on one another. Hmm. As a plain matter of fact, one couldn't live without the other. Mm -hmm. Bogus. And that's why I can't understand. Ground hmm. like this is usually teeming with insects. Yeah. This area is completely devoid of it. Hmm. You like fiddle-faddle? 
think I'd like to get some shots of this. I'm going back to the car for my camera. Yeah, I'd really like to see you rub your forearms together. Oh. <laughs> hey, an Indian head, Penny. Yeah. Here, let me help you. Uh, oh. What was that? I don't know. You know, it might be coming from behind that rather large grasshopper. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Ah, uh, luckily the grasshopper's closed caption. Frank, would you quit clowning with that giant grasshopper? Oh, no, stop! He's signing. Ah! Oh, no. <laughs> no, you can't save him. Get him a car. Quickly, get a really big applesauce jar with holes poked in the lid. Hey, Diane Arbus, why don't you take a picture? Hey. You got a camera. We'll send help. Bye bye. So, feel like Chinese? Has shown no radioactivity to speak of, sir. Only background. There's got to be an explanation somewhere. I've got your explanation for you, Tom. Ed. We've got bugs. <laughs> now listen, you've known me ever since I came to Paxton. You know I'm not given to hysteria, and you've got to listen to me with an open mind. Who is talking today? Crickets are gonna die. What are you talking about? I'm talking about giant locusts. Wow. Giant locusts are responsible for all of this. I love it. <laughs> no evidence of any explosion, Colonel. The buildings look more like they were hit with a battering ram. Mm. We found these guns at the scene. The kind people keep in their homes, and they've been fired. Can I go home okay. now? Okay, Lieutenant. <laughs> now listen, Tom. These are eight feet tall, some even bigger. They're vicious, merciless killers. Now, Ed. It stops them cold with that now, Ed, every time. Lieutenant. Lieutenant, phone Springfield again. Tell him I'm still waiting for those specialists. Yes, sir. Frank Johnson is dead. He was killed not half an hour ago. It was horrible. Obviously, you're both under a strain. Won't you listen? You've got to get some soldiers out there before more people are killed. The same. The governor asked me to exercise discretion in dealing with you. Please don't make it any harder for me than it is. You have to believe us. Listen, you've seen the giant plants out at the lab. Yep. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to tell me you bred these things? Yep, then I deep fried them. Since I did, yes. Hey, hey, it's some Ike. Locusts must Say have hi to Ike. Hi, Ike. They ate some of I the like plants Ike. or some of the radioactive plant food. But well, their cell division accelerated immediately. That is, they started to grow abnormally fast. Well, so it's your fault. They had to have a constant food supply to sustain this growth. So, a couple of months ago, they wandered into the grain elevator outside of town. When they grew to this giant size, they pushed their way out. Well, they just pushed the building down. Yes. Okay, okay, forget locusts. Giant panda bears, and Each they fly. One of them has the strength of ten men. There are probably two or three hundred of them. So, last night, not satisfied with eating the grain, they came to Ludlow. Yes. <laughs> Even if I went for your story about the size, it would be hard to believe they'd attack people. Sergeant. Have these people killed? Did a report come in from the chemists? No, not yet, sir. Why won't you listen? I am listening. We saw Frank Johnson killed by a giant locust. Sure, and there are reliable people who've also seen flying saucers and weird little men from Mars. Well, take another look at that town out there. Or have you found the answer? God, I want pork right now. Lieutenant? Yes, sir. I'm taking a detail out for a look around. You're to keep radio contact. I want ten men. Get them on the truck. Yes, sir. All right, Ed. Strap this on. You can show me the exact spot where you saw... Well, whatever it was you saw. No. After all, it's his grasshopper. These ribbings are so much less gentle to flee. No, it's a good thing they're not huge eyebrow mites. Oh. Why, <laughs> Jones are armed to the teeth. <laughs> We're not afraid of big old bugs. Army, Army guys, guys like gentle, gentle hugs. hugs. Well, some. Is that too windy back there for you guys? What, is the truck just gonna dump them? Is this a snipe hunt? All right, all right. Let's get the oh, yeah, yeah. Watch the oh, US. Oh, big piles of potatoes in the field, yeah. Defending countries, wow, rhubarb. Then we're going to dig us some crazy grasshoppers. Why they give us nets instead of rifles? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, Observational so cool. here. All right, man, pan out. Well, that's one of my favorite mountains in Illinois back mm. there. Hey, somebody's throwing Ooh. out nice roofing material here. Here's the spot, Tom. He wet him here. Ooh. Where's the body? There isn't anybody. No. I don't think I have them. Like right. There would be a body. There isn't anybody. Mm. All right, man, into the woods.
I don't know, Crow, it's mm. probably just me, but the yeah. whole idea of a screenplay based around the life of Peter Graves, yeah. <laughs> it just spells box office poison. Mm. And then to go and narrow the focus so much. Here, let me sizzle it for you, Mike. Huh. Peter Graves went to the University of Minnesota, right? I guess. I, I guess nothing. The man went to the U of M, and that's exactly what my screenplay exploits. Well, can we just get on with this, please? Yes. <clears throat> Here we go. Just plain Peter. The U of M years. Or, Peter Graves goes to college at the University of Minnesota. <clears throat> A screenplay by Crow T. Robot. Okay, okay, let's go. I'm only doing this because I need the stage time, Pinbeak. Okay, Servo. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Act one, Peter Gray's enrolls at the University of Minnesota. Okay, okay, here we go. Hi, uh, I'm the registrar. May I help you? Yes, I'm Peter Graves, and I'd like to enroll at the University of Minnesota. <laughs> oh, uh, act two. Mike, you gotta help me with the card. Oh, right, okay. I don't have any. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Act two, Peter Graves attends his first class. Hi, I'm Peter Graves. Is this biology 101? Yes? Good. I'm Peter Graves, and I'm in the right class. Huh. <clears throat> um, act three. Thank you, Mike. Uh, act three. Uh, Peter Graves enjoys dorm life. Okay, hold on. Think fast. Aha! I'm Peter Graves, and I'm enjoying some good-natured ribbing with one of my many new pals here at the University of Minnesota. Act four. Extracurricular activities. <clears throat> oh, this is great. This one. It's just... Oh. <clears throat> I'm Peter Graves, and I was wondering if you could direct me to the natatorium as I'm attending a swim meet. It's that way. Thank you. I'm Peter Graves. <laughs> okay. Uh, act five, Peter finds his calling. I'm Peter Graves, and I'm beginning to take an interest in the theater arts and speech communications here crow, at the University many, of... How many acts what? are there? Uh, 15. <laughs> uh, crow, yeah? I'm not criticizing here, but were you worried about the redundancy factor or not? Or... Well, I felt my point was important enough to risk that, but let's do the climax. I think you'll really like oh, it. Yeah. Okay, let's skip to the climax. Okay. Great. All Great. the cards yeah. over now. There we go. Good. Act 15, graduation. I'm Peter Graves. Thank you for the opportunity of learning at this fine institution. As I look back, I remember fondly my enrollment process, where, had you been there, you might have heard me say, Hi, I'm Peter Graves, and I'd like to enroll at the University of Minnesota. Or the time when That's I, it, Peter Graves... you are what? way out there! What? Hey. Way out! Gee, uh, uh, I gotta agree with him, Crow. Huh? No, much, but no. Mike, Mike, no matter what you or, or Servo may think of it, my little screenplay, if it's convinced just one person out there that Peter Graves went to the University of Minnesota, then I've done my job. I'm Peter Graves, and we've got movie sign on A&E. Oh, look out, Barney Paris, help me out! Hey, Frank. How was the brothel last night? we could night? train one of these giant wussets to pull a plow, huh? Everything's not a joke, yeah. Ted. Yeah. I don't like this place. All right, take it easy. Well, maybe they were big ants. Didn't see them real good, did you? You know, last time was a good eating. Yeah? Must have a ketchup. Shouldn't they all be different ethnic types? Nah, no kidding. I ate them once, down in Mexico. Well, you better watch your step, they'll have a good even. We're having a lighthearted conversation in the midst of unbearable tension. Well, at least it's a nice day to be out, eh? They must have seen something. Mr. Wainwright's a scientist. He's trained to see things right. Well, these days they blame the atom for everything. Bad health, bad crops, bad weather. Bad lieutenant. Now it's grasshoppers. <laughs> they couldn't have just dreamed up this guy Frank being knocked off. Ah. Ah. Now, uh, were your glasses in a case or did they just drop out of your pocket? Oh, oh, Mr. Carter. Hmm. What would Mitchell do right now, huh? Gladys, quit bugging the Stevens. Herman music out there. 
Hey, since I'm Peter Graves. They're all too embarrassed to admit they hear anything. <laughs> hey, uh, is this what we're looking for? Oh. Yow. Sit. Stay. <laughs> Just get a giant screen door. Hey, let's pull one leg off and watch it try to walk. <laughs> no. I think we should have waited for the sanctions to take effect. <laughs> Uh, you see, if you're going to have a war, you should rake first. Oh, yeah. Acorns in here. Ah. <laughs> uh, just run in that general direction. <laughs> We're going to get a lot of raid, right? We're going to go get a whole lot of raid, right? Exterminate with extreme prejudice. Oh, this is a bug hunt, man. You wish upon a star. <laughs> you know, sometimes you can't hear the pincer with your name on it. Hey, you guys know where we can get some decent weed around here? Hi. Hey, better get the place ready. Yeah. Uh. America responds to the new Robert Urich Fate on a sitcom. <laughs> Al Bundy takes command. Can I uh, get a ride with you guys? Just help yourself to a gun, Peter. John Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. Oh my God! Insects trained by Russ Weatherwax. One weekend a month, my ass. Well, that went well. Hmm. And every available man. I'm throwing a party. Also get some air support. We'll bomb them out of that forest. Yeah, that ought to hold a little. Gonna do? Going in there and wipe out every last one. They'll slaughter you. Not this time. Dig this. I want light artillery brought up with Company H. You don't have enough men. There'll be three regiments out there tomorrow by 0300. You don't understand. You still don't have enough men. Not enough men for a couple of hundred locusts? There are more than a couple of hundred. But you said before. That was that... before I heard them screech. The noise they made convinces me there are more. How many are there? I don't know. There could be countless numbers. I think you better call in the regular army, Tom. Where would I get off calling for the regular army to handle some oversized grasshoppers? Boys, boys, don't Why, they'd fight! they me right out of the service. Ooh. Lieutenant, take charge of the east sector. Yeah, yeah speak, what? Tom. Hi, anyone for Nutter Butters? Excuse me, bum leg. I'm afraid he doesn't understand how serious this is. Well, after all, he knows what the military is capable of. Oh, just jump on well, me, too. It. He has faith in regimental firepower because he's seen it work. Faith, the faith, the faith. Never come up against army like this before. Well, you've done all you can. No, no, I haven't. In a way, I feel responsible. Audrey. In a way? <laughs> I hope he's in deadly danger if those locusts break out of the forest. Well, back to the salt mine. What are you going to do? I'm going to Washington. Maybe the army people will listen to me. I'll go with you. Maybe I can help. I saw them, too. All right. Mind if I catch a ride? I've got to convince them, Audrey. We may be witnessing the beginning of an era that will mean the complete annihilation of man. Hmm. Annihilation? What will I wear? Annihilation. The beginning of the end. Well, real good then. Bye-bye. And guests at the beginning of the end stay at the beautiful Capitol Dome. Inferior guests stay at the Defense Department Annex. This gentleman is the enemy. Moving pictures. This locust, more commonly known as the grasshopper, is almost identical to the giant locust of Ludlow, except for its size and the fact that the giant's wings fail to develop. They cannot fly. Now I'll get comfortable. The locust is intelligent. It's strong. He is armed. Locusts follow a leader. His name's Larry. Like the bee and the ant, they're able to communicate with each other. Ant bee? This communication or call is produced by the hind legs. Let me demonstrate. This is the 1956 Australian locust plague. And this is the 1910 fruit gum company. 400 square miles. Seen it. We've been plagued by locusts since biblical times. You're not We've funny. Various forms of combating them. Sit down. As a matter of fact, in our own country, the early settlers of the Massachusetts Bay Colony ow, armed ow, themselves ow, with bundles ow, of brush ow. and drove millions of locusts into the sea. Hmm. Now today, despite the fact that we've developed powerful insecticides, I haven't got a series. The locust still inflicts damages to the tune of $25 million in the United States alone. California, 
Colorado, Texas. Uh, Connecticut. Even this small locust will attack a man. Little bastard. It has two powerful jaws that are edged with sharp teeth. And they're vicious it gossips. It will kill other insects and devour them. If no other insects are available, it becomes a cannibal, hmm. turning on its own kind. She wants me. What in the good God are you talking about? Now, you've seen what the locust can do in its normal size, smaller than your thumb. Imagine, if you will, a locust that's grown bigger than a man and is continuing to grow, some larger than others, but each one a deadly killer. I think it will go something like I this. I hope you realize we haven't much time. You are a scientist, Mr. Wainwright. Mm -hmm. You know what locusts can do. I'm a soldier. I know what guns can do. Together, we could... I feel secure the Illinois National Guard can handle this situation. Just like they handled the Chicago Convention. Did you want to say something, General Hanson? No, sir. I'm deeply ashamed. I was greatly impressed with your presentation, Wainwright. I'm sure all of us were. Thank you very much for coming. Go in peace and sin no more. <laughs> I'm afraid my presentation didn't impress you quite enough, General. Yes. I don't understand you. I mean that when the locusts start to move out of that forest, I'm not sure you'll be able to stop them. <laughs> what are you suggesting we do, Mr. Wainwright? Hit them with everything you've got now. Wow. You need more men, a lot more men. You need tanks and heavy artillery. As of now, the full strength of the Illinois National Guard is in the line surrounding the Ludlow, Illinois forest. Go away now. As I said before, Mr. Wainwright, you are a scientist. Why not leave the fighting to the military? You just call me a wussy? Well, guess I'll just leave you a few of my brochures. No, that's, that's fine. Thank you. Urgent call from Paxton, Illinois, sir. Here, you're talking this end, sir. Mm. General Shorthair. General Shorthair? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Stuffing. Yeah. Whatever you make. I don't know, General. I see. It's the map of Jesus, Oh, please. Thanks. You got us up there. Matt, to apply to Paxton with Mr. Wainwright. We'll take charge of operations. Hey, I'm vindicated. How many dead? Wainwright, I owe you an apology. <laughs> the locusts have broken through our defense line. Thousands of casualties. Our troops are reorganizing to prevent Paxton itself from being overrun. I'm trying not to laugh, sir. Da, 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 da. The hill position in the suburbs of Paxton must be held. Hmm. Otherwise, the 100 miles between Paxton and Chicago will lie open. Can I get some nuts? General? We can't land in Paxton, sir. Why not? It just came over the radio, sir. Giant locusts have overrun Paxton at 1400. I told you so. Yes, sir. Well, no more lunches at Milda's Cafe, huh? Dear Abby, I'm an elderly woman who doesn't enjoy... Se oh, this came to the wrong place. Captain, I want these positions held. I want them held at all costs, if humanly possible. Captain, have your map people immediately turn out 300 overlays, showing the Chicago defense line is tentatively set. Yes? Thank you, Sergeant Whisperthin. Yes, nothing gets tobacco juice out of your clothes. Boy, I read slow. Major Everett. Our road trip to Peoria is What about canceled. Squadron 12? They haven't reported in yet, General. Well, let me know the moment you're here. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll be with you in a moment. Okay, son. Bill, you'll proceed at once to temporary GHQ Central Sector and assume command. Robert Frost. Frost. Mm. You will order the 81st Armored Division to proceed without delay from Fort Sheridan to Chicago. Have the CG report to me upon arrival. And get this man an arm. The Defense Department will alert the following <laughs> divisions. The 1st Armored, the 40th. The 1st Airborne, yeah. the 92nd, and yeah. the 76th. Okay, any salad with that? Now, what's your problem? Food. At the rate refugees are pouring into Chicago, General, our emergency stocks won't last long. Then we'll feed them crickets. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Ugh. Ugh. Now, why did I do that? Coxaphene is one we haven't tried. How good is it? Almost as powerful as chlordane. With no aftertaste. All right, ship 2,000 gallons out to the base. Take a pint for yourself. Excuse me. <laughs> Hello. Buck Lab. He's speaking. Squadron 12 just reported. They say they came down on the deck and practically drowned the enemy in insecticide. They just got a haircut and the it hurts. Chlordane didn't even slow them down. They threw it back at me and laughed. They have to come up with something stronger. I'll do my best, General. Goodbye. Mm. How about chlordane with a tiny drop of retsin? Stuff's no good. Forget it. Doesn't cause enough birth defects. Ah, oh, what else can I do around here? Make myself useful. Ah, here we go. I 
Oh no, a new petition against tax again? God. Looks pretty bad, doesn't it? No, you look fine. I thought oh, you went back to New York. Well, the big story's here. Well, look, your editor called you back because it was too dangerous. I wanted to be. Nothing we've done so far. His boil. Insecticides, fire, bombs. Nothing has done any good. In so little time. Well, you're doing everything you can. Well, everybody is, but it's not good enough. Mm -hmm. What if I try to toss a quarter into that? The time thing will come when the beasts will inherit the earth. There's your answer, a fine pilsner. <laughs> Lee Marvin in the bridges of Madison County. Hey, General, where are you going? I'm going to Decatur. I'm gonna shoot that paper hanging son of a bitch. Sorry about that, sorry. Boy, just wait till the grasshoppers show up, huh? <laughs> All quiet in the western suburbs. No, there's no sign of the locusts yet, General. Out. Should we just continue firing at random? The draft planning program. And with an arc of five divisions to the west and south. Mr. Mitchell. Yeah. General Hanson is confident that he can keep the menace at bay. That's Dennis, the menace. Units of the Air Forces and Marines are moving into position to back up those forces already deployed by the Army. Now, the one advantage our forces hold over the Don't enemy sit so close, dear. is that they always reveal their intention to attack. Which is nice. Before every attack, the locusts send forth this warning in the form of a high-pitched screech. It's kind of like the Sun King's now, bell on top of their TV. increases in intensity <laughs> until it reaches ear-shattering proportions. Sounds like Mariah Carey. When the screech reaches its full intensity, the, high weather the locusts attack. Copy. We've got every available man in the line, Major, and I think there's no question but what will be. Hush now. Oh, I love a spring rain. I shouldn't have worn my butt dress. Oh, great, they're early. The Cubs don't win the pennant. The Cubs don't win the pennant. Meanwhile, at the Boy Scout Jamboree at a Potawatomi Park. I want to drive your tank. I call the front. Wow, so far seems pretty. Oh, my God, look out. We'll negotiate. Cricket lighter, just a dollar forty-nine. Wow! Oh, I'm hit. They got Jiminy. Get him! We were pinned down near Elgin. Aurora was pretty bad. Whew! God, it stunk in there. Whew. Sweat line. Okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me clear the shot. This is where you step back and say, thank God for my exoskeleton. Now, well, this is flying officer Jim Cavanaugh. The dad lion's covered with tobacco juice. Now, I want to try an alternate route. Let's all welcome Bob Hope, ladies and gentlemen. Even our best footage can't stop them. Have you seen my mommy and daddy? <laughs> Damn nazi grasshoppers. Hi, I'm gonna sneak in here to say, hope you're enjoying the show. Bye for now. Oh, I've got a great gun. No, I don't need a bazooka. The Orkin Army will storm the beaches of Lake Forest. We're gonna have to get organized. We should not be losing to grasshoppers, people. So is this protecting Chicago at all costs, sir? They keep coming, General. They're lobbing aphids at us. They're hammering at a single point in our line. I don't know how, but they've arranged air cover from the Mexican army. They cut off our supply lines and ate the radio men. And no grasshoppers were hurt in the making of this film, huh? I don't believe it. They're using Hannibal's surprise. Way back. 
dropped away. They've broken our code, and the sergeant was a grasshopper undercover. for an important announcement. Uh, a giant locust has reached the Chicago South Side and nearby suburbs. I repeat, the giant locusts have reached the Chicago South Side Julius. and nearby suburbs. They control the Deep cement off. business. Take shelter in basement. Take shelter in Do not basement. dress like grain. Do not panic. Attention, Love please. Grain. Attention, please. Keep moving. Do not block the highway. Do not covet Do thy neighbor's manservant. <laughs> Stamp all fires Keep dead all out. Do not panic. Do not panic. Oh my God. Oh geez, I remember the last time you saw Oh yeah. Hey, hey, I want a Chicago style hot dog. In Grant Park on Lakeshore Drive. Bum bum ba da la dum dum. Ah, excuse me, am I on 24? Yes, yeah, come on, baby, comb that hair. Boy, I wish I was a tub of dippity doo. Yes, 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 yes. Oops. This is a single room. Ah, you women take so long to get ready. I'm kidding. I didn't say the skirt was ugly. I just... General, Adam Sames. Draw up a chair and sit down. They've got a picture of Russ Bender. Hmm. I sent for you because of a new development that may be favorable to us. Bruce Geller called. The locusts have stopped their advance. They're huddled in the alleys and buildings just outside the loop. The locusts got cold. When the temperature drops below 68 degrees, they just stop moving. <laughs> well, maybe now is the time we could move in and destroy them. Well, they aren't in hibernation, sir. They'll move if they're provoked, and they're just as deadly as ever. They just shoot me down. When the sun comes out tomorrow, they'll be active again. The Air Force is standing by. B-52 loaded with an atom bomb. Oh, good. Maybe they'll get larger. You can't drop an atom bomb on Chicago. Sure you can. Washington has given me authority to do just that, as a last contingency. If the bomb is dropped early tomorrow, there'll be no loss of life. The city will be evacuated by then. But what about the property? There'll be a billion dollars worth of damage in a site that's too contaminated to rebuild on. I realize that. I just don't care. But if we don't drop the bomb, Chicago will almost certainly fall. Look, we'll move the loop Bomber to Schaumburg. Bomber alerted for a drop at dawn. If we don't come up with something by then, I'll make a final check with Washington. Washington. And relay they're okay. Mm, no Chicago. Isn't there no, a chance not? the locust could die in the night of the cold? No, not at this time of year. Anyway, they got blankets. It takes 24 hours of exposure at 14 degrees. Hmm. Is that cold? 14 degrees. some way you could... Drive them into the lake? In Washington, you said the settlers did that. Settlers? Hmm? Oh, oh yeah, people who settled. Well, the early settlers in Massachusetts did literally drive them into the sea. But they weren't dealing with giants. Oh, that's my Darjeeling. Just a second. Wait a minute. We can't drive them. We can invite them to leave. Drive. Mm -hmm. We could attract them. Attract. Dressed like a sexy if grasshopper. If we their call, General, it might work. It just might work. A call for insects? Call for insects! Call for insects! Hunting, General? The duck call. Yes. There's one for bees, too. They use it in apiaries. A bee call? It might work. What do you need? A uh, tennis ball, an accordion, and a picture of Don Amici. I need, uh, I need an audio oscillator. I need an audio tooth. Two audio... Th three, three, four. Make we it can four. Get. I need an oscilloscope. I need some high-frequency radio equipment. And a boat. A fast boat. Hmm. Whatever you need, we'll get. Oh, uh, then a bottle of Johnny Walker Something Blue. Something I have to get myself. Mm -hmm. Something that will tell me when I've succeeded. What's that? A live giant grasshopper. Get out. I'm not with him. Here, live giant grasshopper. Here, live giant grasshopper boy. All right, drop your segmented thorax and come out. We've got your blade of grass surrounded. Sing whenever we sing whenever we sing. Sir, please. Savages, worse than British soccer fans. Well, they gotta be around here somewhere. Hey, 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 they're stealing the truck. Hey! So long, suckers. <laughs> oh. All right, man, off the track. Ow. 
suggest that you send some of them that way and some down there and you and I try the alley. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, you four men go that way, you men that way. Just go out just anywhere. You, you know what you do. What is this, a welcome respite from all the action? You know, Major, lately I've been watching the unfolding of me. And yet, I can't love. I appreciate that, yet I don't think it's appropriate right now. Mm. So, Doc, uh, how's the science game working out for you? I thought about getting into science. I got a C in it in junior high. Actually, I was in interior design. Always thrilled me. That was my knack for a while. Textures. <gasps> hey, they just set off the grasshopper alarm. Tonight, Chicago died. Shut up. Shut up. So, if they scissor me in half with their powerful jaws, please don't keep me alive. Science and the military working side by side. Tiffany's. That's where the grasshoppers go to smoke. Ah, uh, finally, the men's room. I've been looking for that. I know what you're thinking, grasshopper. Did I fire six shots or. Oh. I wasn't scared. Were you scared? That damn kid on the pogo stick again. Let's get him. Louie, I think this is going to be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. I'm Peter Graves. Hey, you know, giant grasshoppers, you just take it for granted you can find them, and then when you want them, they disappear. Hmm? Yes, I <laughs> junk. Oh, God, leave me alone. <laughs> You know, Chicago is a 24-hour town. Yep. <laughs> Trumpy. Hey. <laughs> the Von Traps have escaped. Come on, we oh. here. Come on. And keep quiet. We just got him down. Meanwhile, in Castle Wrigley. <laughs> You're dead, Graves. I've got friends. This is a dead man I'm looking at. Well, it looks like you are having a pretty good time for yourself out in Peoria last night, eh, Hoppy? It's lucky we got one of the smaller grasshoppers. Calm down, this will go easier on you if you just give us some names. You're not too close, Major. You put that cage up in a hurry, and I don't know how strong Come it is. Come on, how about some grass in here? I was teaching my engineering class at the university. It was safe and secure. And look at me now. No, not safe and secure. <laughs> You know, I'm 37 years old, and all of a sudden I realize for the first time how much I've taken life for granted. Not now. I guess that's something you can't take for granted, Major. Ed, how will you know when you've got the right sound? Oh, I have no idea. He'll tell us? How? Oh. He'll react to it, and this polygraph will record his reaction. Uh -huh. How long will it take? It's a matter of trial and error. Could take 10 minutes or 10 hours. I think Pete was affected by that gas. Yeah. We don't have 10 hours. We've got theater tickets. Dropping that bomb at dawn. I hate to ask you this, but where are your nipples? How does this work? Well, I've just attached these wires from the polygraph to the two copper strips at the base of the cage. Now, the locust, like every other living thing, has galvanic reflexes. Come here, electric just close it. Direct ratio to its activity or emotional stimulation. Next time, flat foot, I don't understand. Mind. Well, in other words, when we hit the correct sound or signal, the grasshopper will react to it, and the polygraph will record the change. Mm -hmm. Now, you notice how steady and regular the movement of the needle is now? Oh, yes. Well, when we reproduce the grasshopper's call, the lines will become longer and highly irregular. It's like a lie detector test, isn't Sit it? Sit down. But it's the first time a grasshopper ever got one. Now, if you'll keep your eye on the needle for well, any unusual we'll jumps head or off. dips... I got a little surprise right. for you guys. Really? Oh, goody. This is going to oh, be really boy. fun. Goody. Will you set up that big brick wall? <laughs> okay, Mr. Tom Servo, are you ready for this? Oh, you bet, Mike. This movie's given me a great idea for a stand-up routine. Now take your seat. Okay. Ready? All right. Okay, lights, cam bot. 
Thank you. Thank you, everybody. What a beautiful crowd tonight, huh? Say, did you ever notice the difference between grasshoppers and locusts? <laughs> well, for one thing, locusts have shorter antennae than grasshoppers. Grasshoppers walking down the street like, hey, look at me, I got some big antennae. <laughs> Where a locust is walking down the street, it's more like, oh, no, my antennas are so small. <laughs> Smaller antennae, you see, on the locust. Have you checked out the ovipositor in a female grasshopper? <laughs> you see, they use them to drill holes in the grass, you know what I mean? <laughs> They're like, oh. Oh, I need to drill a hole. Hope I brought my ovipositor. <laughs> but female locusts have short ovipositors, so they're more like, Oh, no, my ovipositors are so small. <laughs> oh, what else can I tell you about myself? Oh, longhorn grasshoppers. Are they something to what? <laughs> you know, they come from the family Tetaganiidae. My right ladies back me up on this one. Now, you see, locusts, they're different from the Tetaganiidae, especially those Rocky Mountain locusts. <laughs> they're known as Melanopolis Spritas. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much, ladies and gentlemen. Tip your waitresses. Good night. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, thank well, you. Oh, Tom, huh? oh, that, that really, really uh, sucked. sucked. Oh, no, it was very good. It was informative, too. Oh, gee, thanks. You know, I was thinking of doing it on The Tonight Show. Yeah. Oh, Tom, I mean, you, you were good, but I mean, you know, you got to be really, really good to be on The Tonight Show. Well, how about David Letterman, then? Well, they just don't let anybody on Letterman. How about Chevy Chase? Hey, oh, there hey. you go. Send him a tape. I think he got a real shot at <laughs> oh, it. Gee, we'll thanks. be right back. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. <laughs> very, very, very. Byron good. Allen. So, are uh, you in love with me yet? No. I have my rights. I have my rights. Well, well, I've just come to see what you've done with all the grant money. Oh, my God! When right, you've had your chance. Now it's the Air Force's turn. Copper strips in the bottom of the cage. Hello! Operator. Operator, this is a top priority call. Get me General Wagner at the air base. You hear me, Graves? You're not getting anything out of me. Nothing. One moment. Da, 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 da. I'm getting the pina colada song. Now. Look, General, the locusts outside will stay put until the temperature reaches 68 degrees. That's about an hour and a half from now. Oh, this phone is smooth, sleek. Uh, hello. Wagner, Chicago has been evacuated. Unless you receive instructions to the contrary by 0616, that is. Well, call it 8. That is 90 minutes from now. That good for you? We'll order your B-52 crew to deliver the bomb on the designated target. Start with a shed aquarium. Repeat the instructions back to me. Yes, I love you too. Correct. Would you stop questioning the grasshopper? There's no time to fool with that now. Major, get a detail of men up here Look to move this stuff. He's got an hourglass shape. Bring some extra Jeez. grenades. There's some of my staff car. There's a new lab set up for you at my new HQ outside the city. I can't move now. Well, you can't stay here, not with an atom bomb hanging over your head. I don't have any choice. I'm Peter Graves. Now we've been using a filtered signal, and it hasn't worked. But it's just possible that the hearing apparatus of the locust can detect harmonic frequencies above the human range. Well, to test these frequencies, I need every minute that's left. If you'll just give me one man to replace Miss Ames. I'm staying. Huh? Well, look, this is no time to be worrying about a big story. I'm not worried about a story. Look, I just want to drop my A-bombs. Before it's too late. <coughs> no. Major, mm -hmm. you and a detail of two men will remain here with Mr. Wainwright. Mm -hmm. I will station men at three observation posts. Mm -hmm. One in the suburbs, mm -hmm. one near the Art Institute, mm -hmm. and one on top of a downtown hotel. And one on top of me. Also, a helicopter will spot from above. There will be a getaway car parked downstairs at the main entrance. I suggest you use it by... Oh, eight, I guess. By 5.45 at the very latest. If you are successful, contact me at once so I can stop the bomb. Just a little bowl of wheat, please. Oh. <laughs> it's 05 on, um, um, yeah. Well, good morning. You got the loop here. It's going to be a nice day today. We're going to get bombed. You probably heard about that. They're scraping the grills at the Billy Goat at this very moment. Mm. I'm a grunt grasshopper. That's all I am honest. Sweet Lorraine. Do I really have to stay here for this? So, uh, where's Rasmataz? I don't see it. Hmm. No. Nope. You know? Yeah, I've got to have those Glengarry leads. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Have you ever associated with crickets? Have you ever taken part in a plague? Have you eaten crops in excess of $1 million? <laughs> that damn Tandy equipment. Folks, as for traffic today, there's none. Can't explain it. <laughs> what do you know? Boy, the convention business just went straight downhill, didn't it? Wow. Look at that. Hmm. What the Sam Hill is he doing? I'm not going to admit my failure. Well, it's shaping up to be a pretty nice day. Maybe go get some Christmas shopping done. Not a lot of competition. <laughs> the long Kathleen battle out of well, maybe he's innocent. Maybe they got the wrong hopper. Mm. Oh, I forgot to turn this thing on. Hey, look at this. He's got high blood pressure. I think you've got it. This is what it sounds like when grasshoppers cry. We've got it. My judge Higgins, I think you've got it. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh no, not the face! You took out a couple thousand eyes! Pete! Pete! Short! Control! Burst! <laughs> hey, I got it! We could just shoot him! Oh well, acceptable losses. I had to shoot him. Well, let's chocolate dip that grasshopper. Here. Bug fell and hit his head against the bars, if anyone asks, right? Well, back at it. I want to polygraph the doorknob Emergency now. Lab at Chicago GHQ. Emergency lab at Chicago GHQ. Come in, General. Are you there? Now listen to me, Wainwright. We found it, General. We found the frequency. Hmm. Good. Now stand by. I've got to stop that A-bomb. I'll get right back to you. Chicago GHQ to double B. Chicago GHQ to double B. <laughs> They're not going to let us drop the bomb. Don't answer it. This is Double B. Come in, Chicago GHQ. Over. Hanson here. Your mission is canceled. Real sorry, boys. Your base. Repeat the message. Over. It's the commies. Mission canceled. Return to base. Repeat Over. it again. Chicago GHQ to emergency lab. Right here. The show is yours, Wainwright. All right. Get that equipment on the lake in a boat, and I'll be your Pied Piper. Get me my little green shoes with curly toes. Oh, I love men who use fairy tale imagery. <laughs> he just polygraphed a sandwich. He needs real help. I still don't understand. Why didn't you put the oscillator in the boat in the first place to send out the call? Why track them here? Because we'd never get them all. Mm. Here, look. Gilbert's a scream today. And here we are in downtown Chicago, near the mm -hmm. lake. And the locusts are scattered all through the suburbs and mm. on the south side. Mm. And we'll send out the call from here. Yes, but that's going to attract them to us, not into the water. Shut up. Well, first of all, it's imperative that every last one of the locusts hear the call. Now, in order to do that, we've got to get our amplifier speaker at the highest possible point to get maximum range. Now, we've got ours on the roof of this building, which mm. is one of the tallest in Chicago. Now, once we get them here... Mm -hmm. I see, then the boat will take over. Exactly. Once we have them in the heart of the loop near our location, they'll be within range of the amplifier on the boat. Now, we'll then radio our oscillator signal out to the boat, and they, in turn, will rebroadcast it over their amplifier, attracting the locusts mm. to them and into the lake. We hope. See, that's what you we do hope. so well. You cut me down. Well, you check and see about the temperature. I know a scientist who needs a back. How can we be sure, sir? Hmm? What do you mean? How can you know that we'll get them all? Well, that's where our observation <laughs> posts and the helicopter come in. From their reports, we'll know the exact location of the locusts at all times. And if it's working. It's 70 degrees, Dad. Cooler near the lake. They're probably starting to move. Emergency lab to all observation posts. Emergency lab to all observation posts. Report in. I'm hiding from a lion. Post number two to emergency lab, over. It's got these women scared stiff. Over. 
I'm situated in a store across from the Art Institute on Michigan Boulevard. Olga Bras are on sale. Nothing in sight. Out. Observation post number three to emergency lab. I'm on the roof of the Drayton Hotel. I see a huge swirling Don't crown rose. Don't see any rose. grasshoppers in this area, but the south side's getting some action. Wow. Out. Out. Emergency lab to observation post one. Emergency lab to observation post one. You did not report in. What's your location, post one? Nothing going on here. This is observation post number one. I'm right in the middle of them. I'm just south of 73rd and South Shore Drive. Out. Well, Jimmy Freilich's mom says I can stay for dinner. Emergency lab to helicopter. Over. The name's Jeffrey. I happen to be in a helicopter. Emergency lab. The locusts are active on the south side of Chicago. As yet, there are none in the downtown area. Out. Can you read me, emergency lab? <laughs> Over. Yes, we can read you fine, General. Are you all set? Over. Uh, we're not quite ready yet. Dummy here can't I fix the radio. Off a few more minutes. Come on. Over. I think we better start now, General. If they should change their direction and start moving away from Chicago, we may not get them all. Over. I don't like your starting until we're completely ready. This boat has to draw them away from you at a split second's notice. Tidy, tidy. Over. I'd like to start, sir. Then go ahead, baby. Don't say frog, that guy jumps. All right, I'm going to polygraph my tie. Yes, sir. Is that the wire that leads to the speaker on the roof? <laughs> sure. Well, plug it into the amplifier, will you? Yes, sir. All right, playing tall out the window, man. Woo! When Brian Eno ruled Chicago. I don't remember that. Post number one, emergency lab. The locusts are leaving this section. They're heading towards Chicago's downtown. They wanted to rev up the grasshoppers. They just should have played some Marvin Gaye. I'm, to emergency lab. I'm still Paul the Freeze. Are moving on the downtown area. They are radically altering their size depending on your perspective. <laughs> so, does this uh, bus uh, go all the way Just to Just get on a bus. We've got to get organized, Hoppy. Observation post number three to emergency lab. The locusts are everywhere. Yep, over there too, everywhere pretty They're much. They're moving toward your location. I repeat, the locusts are moving toward the emergency lab. They've gotten a hold of firearms and they're drunk. Michigan Boulevard is filled with them. They're everywhere. They're on a shopping rampage. Emergency lab to boat. Emergency lab to boat. It's working, General. It's working. You never take me anywhere. I heard the reports. <laughs> wow, would you look at that? They died the river green. <laughs> that Dick Daly. We're in the famous loop now, Harry. Whacker. 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 I'm blowing the light. This is bogus. <laughs> yep. I'm right behind you here, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, man. That looks good. Uh, everybody, I think we're okay. In pretty good shape. Nothing to worry about. Uh, intelligence, sophisticated equipment, I think. Ah! Hmm. That's what I said. You want to take over that watch post, honey? Are you as turned on as I am? Here they come. They're coming down the street. Get the funniest looks from everyone they meet. What do you want? When their feet are dirty. That's a postcard. <laughs> whoa, whoa, hey, watch it. You're stepping off the building there. <laughs> All right. Carry on our work. Ready. We're ready as soon as we get clearance from observation post. I'll check them immediately. Out. Yeah, as soon as Marconi here is ready. Boat to helicopter. 
They're still going in, sir, but it'll be a while before they all reach the downtown section. Wainwright, you'll have to hold out a bit longer. All the locusts haven't reached the downtown area yet. Excuse me, I'm on the phone here? All right, we'll try. Want some? Ha! Not again, what a day! Save yourself, Tony! Top of the Wrigley Building, Ma! You're not quite the top. We can't hold off much longer! Look, I want to talk. I want to live. I want... Watch it, Carol! Oh, oh thank goodness. Post to observation post. Well, we're not going to get this going. <laughs> Over. Post number one. Jimmy's mom serving All meatloaf. Closer. Post number two. All clear, sir. Helicopter reporting. All clear, sir. This guy's crazy up there! Oh, the third time. How stupid am I? Say goodbye to my 10,000 kids! Hey, I'm just going to the observation deck. Ah! That's my job. Whenever you're ready, General. And let's have it. Okay, go ahead, Audrey. There. Throw the switch. Oh, Jiminy, shut that off! Please, I'm out of here. I know when I'm not wanted. Don't shoot. Goodbye. I'm out of here. You guys feel as silly as I do? Yeah. Old Street Pete. Mm -hmm. Get off the postcard. They're going to blow the postcard. You've been distant lately. Not now. <laughs> Let's spit on him. <laughs> General, they're responding. They're responding. They're swarming toward the water. <laughs> Don't linger on that. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's a trick. It's got to be a trick. There can't be that many lady grasshoppers in Lake Michigan. Wow, Chicago thought the alewives smelled bad. <laughs> well, let's see what this baby can do. Let her rip, Private. Hit it. Hit for sure. Well, we just spent the goofiest week of our entire lives. It's gonna be tough for them. All they ever really shared were the grasshoppers. Yeah. yeah. So this guy caused the whole thing. He's gotta be doing a hard time in Joliet right now. Now, uh, the grasshoppers ate Joliet. Oh. Hey, hey, slow down there, Romeo. Where's your other hand? Ooh. Hey, Mr. Arnstein, here I am. Hey, Tom. Yes? Is this the first movie with grasshoppers? You know, I think it is. I can't remember ever seeing a single grasshopper. And then today, nothing but grasshoppers. Wow, weird. Now, come on, there had to have been one or two grasshoppers. Nope. No, sorry. That Zip. is weird. Like that is weird. You know, yeah. maybe we should read a postcard. Hey. Good idea. Yeah. Okay, we fun. got this one here from Kent and Amy Hakaida. Put Hi. that up on still store Very there, nice. Camba. Mm. They say, as members of the Kim Cattrall fan club, mm -hmm. Crow, Kim Cattrall, wow. yes. we wondered if you yes. were going to view Oliver yes. Stone's Wild yeah. Palm. Uh, no, I don't no. think I do. <laughs> well, gotta go. The fathers and friends are going at it in the swimming pool. Wow! Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that is salty. Yeah. You know, the great thing about these postcards people send in, though, they double as great Bert I. Gordon special effects. It's hey, great, cool. Emma. Check this <laughs> hey. out. Okay. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Grasshoppers are attacking the peach and Andacori Aruba! Oh, help! Oh, that's funny. Hey, I got one. I got one here. Oh no! The grasshoppers! Ah, they're attacking the beetles! Don't defend Ringo at all costs. Oh, they're attacking me. Oh, look at this. Ah, grasshoppers, they don't care. Now they're going for the village of Spires in Oldenburg, Indiana. Grasshoppers have you no decency. Oh, no. uh, grasshoppers have scaled to the very top of our old father high. Oh, so what's the oh, hair? Oh, 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 oh. We are witnessing a time when the beasts have reclaimed Earl Father Hines. Crow. I'm Peter Graves. Crow. I'm done.
Back to you. Uh, oh. Don't, don't be careful. Maybe we yeah. should go yeah. back down there. Remember no. what happened last time. Back to you, sir. Keep your hands up, Frank. Keep your hands up, Frank. <laughs> ah, Mike. Uh, caught us in the middle of our daily routine. What's that they say about boxing, Frank? It's the only real sport. It's the only honest sport. It's the sport of men. Absolutely right. Uh, grab yourself a beer and uh, grab me one too, fellow fighter. <laughs> OK, because we're men. We are men. Yes, you've made your point, Frank. We're men. Yes, Frank. Oh, oh. you want a piece of me? Come on, come on. Huh? Huh? Oh, 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 Frank, 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 please. Please, enough. I have to get the button. Boom! Ow!